the ACC Gymnastics Championship is back. Welcome to Greensboro, North Carolina, where tonight we will crown the first ACC Gymnastics Champion in 40 years. It's been 40 years since the ACC sponsored women's gymnastics. They're here to set the standard and be part of history. Welcome to ACC Gymnastics. We're gonna see some incredible gymnasts. Beautifully done. What a moment for all of these athletes. 10,000 people on their feet. Making it spin. That is just gorgeous. What a way to elevate and amplify this incredible sport. They will push each other to greatness. She can do no wrong. What a finish. This is ACC Gymnastics. A new era begins now. There's an enthusiastic crowd on hand in the Greensboro Coliseum tonight because it's all about the ring. We have four teams competing for this coveted conference title in the ACC Championship. Here are the four teams competing in their current national ranks. NC State, the top ranked team in this conference, followed by Clemson, Pitt, and North Carolina. Hi everybody, I'm Bar Connor, along with my fellow Olympian, Kathy Johnson-Clark. And Kathy, I'm especially excited to be here with you tonight because this is the ACT Championship, and this conference has had a historic season in many ways. So 40 years ago, they had the inaugural ACC Championships, but it didn't quite fly. Now it's back. Clemson announced two years ago it was going to have a gymnastics program and they provided the magic sauce, the energy and enthusiasm that it added to all the meets, all the ACC schools. That is rocket fuel for NCAA gymnastics, and they're gonna launch it into the ACC so history. So there's four terrific teams, and they're all led by some pretty terrific all-around gymnasts. And NC State is definitely the team to beat. They are led by super all-arounder Emily Shepard, who has all of the qualities necessary for spectacular gymnastics. Grace, power, consistency. And Clemson thinks they can go head to head. They are led by all-arounder Rebecca Wells. And for those of you new to gymnastics, an all-arounder does all four events, so they'll be in every lineup for their teams as they try to lead them to an ACC championship. And for the other two teams in this competition, they also have outstanding all-arounders in North Carolina's Julia Noer and Gwen Fink, and Kennedy Duke for Pitt. Now, one of the biggest stories of the entire country this year in gymnastics has been the groundbreaking debut of the Clemson Tigers. For more, let's go to Taylor Tannenbaum. I know NC State comes into tonight as the favorite, but don't count out Clemson because they've already had an historic first year, the Tigers have. And if you look at the gymnastics, it's been really good, but the fans have provided hype as well. They've averaged 8,500 fans at all of their home meets, eighth best attendance in the NCAA. The buzz is palpable. And when speaking to head coach Amy Smith this week, she told us she feels like her team is putting it all together at the perfect time. They dealt with some illnesses in February February, it impacted the team and against NC State in their meet. So she says coming into tonight, it's a chance for another crack at the pack. And she truly does believe Clemson is the best team on this floor. They just haven't executed yet. Keyword yet, guys. All right, when we come back to the Greensboro Coliseum, we will get underway with the first of four rotations, four teams competing in this for the championship trophy tonight in 2024. The beautiful Greensboro Coliseum here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Bar Connor, Kathy Johnson, Clark, and Taylor Tannenbaum on the call. To remind those who are new to gymnastics, here's how this event goes. And this is What to Watch For, presented by Ali. Ally. 
So what we want to watch for, the triple threat, no, NC State, Alexis Tor Ortega, Chloe Negretti, Emily Shepard, they stuck around for this moment to try to win the first ACC championships in 40 years. And Clemson finally at full strength. We'll see what they can do. And Pitt and and North Carolina, it's all about the start. Pitt starts on being, they have got to attack that event and really throw down the gauntlet there. North Carolina on floor, we want to see that leadoff routine bring their coach to tears. They said that was the magic she needed to see. That was our What to Watch For, presented by Ally. All right, four rotations going here. The vault, the bars, the beam, and the floor. This quad meet format is basically like a double dual meet. And we'll explain that as we go on. But let's get started on the vault with NC State and Krista Zultevich, their leadoff competitor. Six compete. The best five scores count towards their team total. She starts with a Yurchenko full oh. and a stuck landing. What a beautifully controlled landing for the first vault up. That has a 9.95 9 start value. So that's the maximum score. That can earn. Okay, over on the bars now. It's Clemson, Trinity Webb in their leadoff spot. Watch for these handstands. They need to be right on top of the bar in that vertical position and a high flying and double layout. A step forward on the landing, so she'll give up a little bit there, but beautiful flight in the air. Those who are, are new to gymnastics will find our scoring tower on the right side. Those are all the athletes in this rotation competing for each of the four teams. If you want the running team total, it's down there in your bottom right. This is once again another innovation for the ESPN family of networks and this ACC championship. We're trying this in the postseason for the first time to keep people up to speed with who's competing and what the current team stores are. On beam, Kennedy Duke for Pitt, and on the floor, it's Amy Wozniak for North Carolina. That's an important routine for them as well. Kennedy just hit her acrobatic series on balance beam, no wobbles. First tumbling pass on floor exercise, a whip to a double back. Balance beam, the judges look for those combinations to be connected smoothly with no interruption between the skills. They look for the full split on those leaps and jumps. And the same goes on the floor exercise. In the leaps and jumps, they must show the full split. Here's the dismount on beam, and it's a one and a half twist, little hop on that landing. And the final tumbling pass here for Amy Wozniak. For North Carolina, watch the landing, see if she can keep that front foot down. Yes, just a little adjustment of the foot, a little balance error. Very dramatic presentation, great start for North Carolina. Dana Durani, their head coach, says, I want Amy as a type A+. Plus. <laughs> She's very focused. Well done there. Alexis Ortega, one of the key players for NC State. Wow, look how tightly she kept those legs together on that Yurchenko full. Same vault as her teammates, so of course it's a 9.95 start value. But I love the form in the air. Straight legs, pointed toes. Just a little deduction on that landing, a little pipe down. The leadoff competitor for NC State on vault had a 9.8. This is Eve Jackson with a pre-competitive yawn. <laughs> <laughs> so Sometimes I used to yawn all the time in competition. I think it's a way of reducing the nerves. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not that she's tired, believe me. These athletes are so excited. We came into this arena and the energy for this first ACC championship in 40 years and a lot of enthusiasm in the stands. Great opportunity. Watch this combination. She's going to do a giant with a half turn right there. It's called a blind change into a straddle Jaeger, nice and high. You really want to see those release skills way above the bar with straight arms on the catch. Here's the dismount. Watch for the shape in the air on the full twisting double back and a great landing. A little 
adjustment of the feet. So they'll take a tiny, tiny little deduction on that. The coaching staff really proud of her improvement. Massive, according to Amy Smith. Really nice job. A little close on the regress, so her arms were slightly bent. But I love this. Very difficult. Full twisting double back. Nice control. Eve Jackson, her father played in the NFL, and her uncle is Deshaun Jackson. Fairly well-known NFL star as well. Back now to the beam. Kennedy Duke got a 9-8, which is a very good score for the leadoff competitor on beam. This is a critical event for this team, isn't it? Absolutely. It's an opportunity, though. This is a nervy event. You really have to take that adrenaline that you feel in competition and channel it to focus and calm but aggressive. Emily Todd. Oh, you see the nerves creep up a little on a very simple skill called a full turn. It's a requirement on the balance beam. A full turn on one foot. Here's her leap series. Switch half to a split jump. Sets up for the acro series. Back handspring layout step at nice straight legs. Very solid on the landing. Emily was ill earlier this week. They weren't sure how strong she was going to be coming into this competition. Muscle memory is a very good thing in gymnastics. They've done these skills for so long, but still to be able to have to recover that quickly and have the energy to compete, great to see it. The freshman from Bristol, England. Several athletes on the team at Pitt that are from different countries. All right, there's a judging conference on floor. Now, the judging at these championships and in the postseason, quite a bit different than the regular season. Then a regular season is just two judges and they average their scores. Here they throw out the high and the low and they average the two in the middle using four judges. Very nice block on that Yurchenko full. Meg Adler, two nine eights in a row for NC State to start off that rotation. Watch the push off the table. That's how you get the lift and the elevation for the amplitude that you need to score big. Amplitude is one of those words that few industries use. Gymnastics knows it well. Absolutely, it's the height and the distance, the, the bigness of the skill. If you drop your jaw or you gasp, it's probably got great amplitude. <laughs> okay, well done. It has nothing to do with volume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These athletes are so excited when we came into this arena. As I mentioned earlier, I was talking to Bob Starkle, the coach at NC State, and he said, this is so great. We're on a podium. We're on live TV. They got a terrific, enthusiastic crowd. You know, when the ACC gets behind something, they really, really oh. invest in it. This is something. This it is, is just the first year in 40 years. Other conferences have taken generations to build this kind of energy. And there's an age group competition happening the same time this weekend. So all the little girls are here watching their heroes. Amy Wozniak got a 9-8. This is Cami Rueda, second up for Carolina. Opens with a very Ooh. high pike double back. Now she took a big step backwards into the lunge. She stayed in bounds. You'll notice they even put tape on that additional mat that they can add just to soften the landing. No deduction, they can use that. Jordan Ewing for Pitt on beam. Emily Todd before her at a 9.75. Back one and a half to front layout on floor. Beautiful amplitude, nice lift off the floor. Here's the acro series on beam. On your left, back handspring, layout, step out, just an extra arm movement. You can see the similarities of these two events. There's dance and acrobatic skills in both balance beam and floor exercise. But the energy and focus is entirely different. A tumbling run, another high tumbling pass, double back. There's a few little landing deductions, but a beautifully executed balance beam routine finishing up and the floor exercise as well. 
basically in this double dual format, as we call it. There are always going to be two events going on simultaneously, but not four in previous quad competitions. Sometimes all four events were going simultaneously, and it was really difficult for the fans to follow. It's a much better format for television as well as the fans in the building as we get ready for Lily Lippett, the freshman from Ohio for Clemson. 985 with the score for Eve Jackson. That skill is called a ray, that single bar release on the high bar. Very nice level of difficulty in this routine. Good handstand position right up on top of the bar. Nice job in that full peel. Look at how she holds on to the stuck landing, holds it for the full second. That's a new rule this year in gymnastics. After they stick the landing, they have to hold that finished position. Ashley Knight now for NC State. Huge ball for them, a front pike with a half twist, and she <laughs> flew and drilled it like a dart in the mat. What a thrill. <laughs> They've had three nine-eights in a row for NC State. Expect a big score for that ball that starts from a 10-0 start value. Well executed. Raina Garvey focusing on some of her key words before she steps up to the beam. Kathy, did you have a few key words that you dialed in before you got on oh, beam? absolutely. And they're choreographed um, that you think before you go and then during the routine. Jordan Ewing before her, their high score, 985. Preparing for her acrobatic series here. That handspring layout. She looks a little cautious. She's still very, very stable but she's trying to relax those nerves. You can see her take a big breath there at the end. Nice front talk, a difficult skill on beam. And on the right of your screen, Gwen Fink. Cami Rueda before her had a 9-8 after the judges conferred. Little balance break on the double stag jump on balance beam. Double back on the floor, big slide back into the lunge. And here's the dismount on beam, a gainer pike off the end. A good strong routine, had a couple little balance breaks, but a hit routine for Pitt, another one. And I love that still Steel City stick signs <laughs> over there on beam. Their fate today relies on how well they do on beam in this first rotation. So far, very clean. Two and a half twist. That's a difficult skill to finish with. It's a blind landing. You really have to know where you are in the air. Lovely position on those first two leaps, especially. Emily Shepard on ball for NC State. It's a big one for that twist. She lands on that line. You'll see those, oh, a little bit low landing on that floor exercise. Emily Shepard on the ball. She landed a little crooked, meaning she didn't go straight in line with the table. Those lines are put there just for the judges to be able to gauge that. If they are too crooked, they will take a deduction. Time to catch up on the scoring tower on your right. You can see where the teams are, how many athletes have competed. The score that's grayed out, that's the low score currently, meaning that's the one they're gonna drop, hopefully. So if you compete six athletes, you'll count the best five scores. So the one that's grayed out is the one that was likely to drop if everyone else in the rotation hits as we bring up Caitlin de Guzman after Lily Leppett had the high score of the day, 9-9. Nine, nine. Look at this beautiful toe point. Straight legs and great execution on that release skill. Perfect distance from the bar. Sets up the dismount. Let's see if she can get a stuck landing here. It will be a big score. Oh, they'll take attempt on that landing. But the routine was really well done. 
Milo Ferzoko now on beam for Pitt. They have two 9.75s there and two 9.85s. So averaging 9.8 at this point. Difficult split jump with a three-quarter revolution in the air. It's interesting that Pitt had struggled on beam recently and this whole year was a little up and down so they decided they have an option to pick the event they wanted to compete here at this championship they said let's start on beam let's be aggressive right off the start that's how they they chose so seeding determined first second third and fourth so the first place got to choose where they started and third place had a choice between beam and floor and they wanted to attack beam get that out of the way what did you prefer as an athlete? Would you like to get it out of the way or wait till later? It didn't matter. I loved beam whenever I competed it, um, but I love starting on bars. Uh -huh. Little hop on that landing, but I am so impressed with how confident these routines are. When Fink's score was a 9.55, Bella Miller now. So that 955 is grayed out in your scoring tower when they'd like to drop. Opens with a front tuck through to a double back. Coach Dana Durani told us she is just a bundle of energy, lifts everyone up in the gym and during competition. Not compete her first two seasons at North Carolina, but she's been in every floor lineup this year. Chloe Negretti now on ball for NC State. That was a gorgeous <laughs> Yurchenko full, and she knows it. I love the knot at the end. She is so serious in competition, so it's nice when that smile with those bright red lips just shows up. She knew that was a great one. It's a very difficult leap, that switch half ring. You really have to show the perfect shape in the air for no deduction. Strong finish, and I love the crown, the confidence that she shows in that routine. Let's go down to balance beam and Taylor. Hallie Copperweed had shoulder surgery in the offseason, a longer recovery than they all expected. The goal this season was to get her back in all around, but the need to manage that shoulder, she's focused solely on beam and floor. And, and Coach McPherson admits it's been a hard year for Hallie not being able to contribute the way she wants to, but despite that, she's still been huge. Coach says the other gymnasts really look to her for leadership and has that positive voice. And Coach added, I'm glad we have Hallie for one more year. And Taylor, she is so beautiful on this event. So the focus on her two strengths, beam and floor, has really helped the team. Oh, and a fall for Lauren Rutherford. Clemson, just at the beginning of a routine. She just released a little too early, missed that release point, and it took the skill out away from the bar too far to catch. So now she'll have to decide to repeat the skill because I believe she's gonna need the combination that's planned in this routine out of that skill. When an athlete falls, they lose a half a point. They can continue the exercise from the fall. They need to fulfill all the requirements in order to get a respectable score and she's one of their best bar workers. So this is a missed opportunity for Clemson. Yes, you can drop one low score, but they were counting on a big one here. Round off, one and a half twist, dismount off the balance beam. Pitt is throwing it down over on beam. Six hit routines for Pitt in this first rotation. That is what head coach Casey Joe McPherson was hoping for. She got what she needed. They decided to go with the gutsy event in the first rotation, and it paid off for the Pitt Panthers. Kaya Forbes now, the sophomore from Louisiana. Another 985 for North Carolina on floor. 
Remember when we talked to Coach Dana Durante, we asked them to describe she had her athletes with one word, and she said, feisty. <laughs> For Kaya. Full twisting double back. She showed a lot of control, but she did step forward. And when you step forward on a backward tumbling pass, they usually take a little deduction for a slight under rotation. She's been in every vault and floor lineup this year, a few times in the bar lineup. Just a sophomore. Front layout to a front layout with a full twist. Still working on kind of coming out of her shell so that the dance is big and bold and entertaining. That is the trend of college gymnastics. Her power is so deceptive. Very quick off the floor. Nice job on that tuck double back. And a <laughs> that's a sweet routine. <laughs> So I would add sweet and feisty. Now watch this. So see how her chest is forward and she has to step forward. So she's slightly under rotated. But the key to gymnastics is to try to camouflage those flaws or tiny little mistakes as best you can for no deduction. Go to bars now. This is a really important routine from their star, Rebecca Wells. She's a senior from Smyrna, Tennessee. They have a 9-9 so far in this lineup from Lily Lippet. But they need a hit routine now after the fall for Rutherford. A 9-8-2-5 or higher for her in this performance would allow them to pass NC State after the first rotation. There is their head coach, Amy Smith who has just done a magnificent job in her first year as the head coach of this team. Team one, as they call them. Building the program, building the fan base, and creating a heck of a team. Big moment for them right now because Rutherford scores in. It's only a 9-0. Giant half. Here's her release skill right on the money. Now she has to be clean. Legs together, legs straight, toes pointed. And if she can get the stick, this is a great comeback routine for them. Well done. I asked Amy Smith the other day, I said, what can you tell me about Rebecca Wells? And she's like, get out of my way, aggressive. <laughs> she takes it on. Wow. Now, this is who you want in this situation. Because she didn't play it safe. Notice she was still far away from the bar. Those arms were nice and straight and stretched out for the regrasp. Number a 9, 8, 2, 5 or higher would move them into the top spot over NC State. Let's go down to Taylor for more on Julia Knower. Julia Knower, you might also know her as Louisiana Lightning. Freshman year at a home meet when she was on vault, the announcer introduced her as Louisiana Lightning and it stuck. She says people on campus actually stop her and call her that nowadays. And it's fitting because if you talk to coach Dana Durani about her, she says Julia is aggressive no matter the event, ready to strike at any time. And it is what makes her exactly the gymnastics champion she is. Now Carolina might be able to take the lead if Noah can hit this routine. Nice job staying in bounds, keeping that landing under control. You can see on the right there, the grayed out score for North Carolina is the 9-5-5. That's the one they would like to drop. So Noah in the anchor spot, and typically the scores build. You put usually your stars at the end of the lineup and try to build to the biggest score you can possibly get. This last pass is a double back and it's in piped position. So look for straight legs. Nicely done. Kept that front foot down perfectly. 
and she knows it is a good one. <laughs> And we have a competition here at the ACC Championship because you can see the standings on the bottom right. Clemson with a slight lead over NC State after a clutch routine for Rebecca Wells from Clemson. North Carolina has a chance to replace that 955 and they'll take the lead if nowhere gets a 9925 or better. Take a look at Lily Lippitz, 9-9 on bars for Clemson. So beautifully swung bars. All of these teams are so competitive. The energy is so high in here. And Ashley Knight, boy, she turned it up a notch and launched that vault in the air, found the landing. All right. And Taylor is with Coach Kim Landris of NC State. Coach, one rotation down. How would you assess your team's start tonight? What a great start. We had our landings. We found them. Krista let us off. Couldn't be more proud. Ashley with a stick. Chloe with a stick. They were aggressive and they nailed it. Heading to bars, what's your message to this team? You know, it's all about us. And so we just got to do one routine at a time, one event at a time. Thank you, Coach. Yes, thank you. All right, we are underway here in Greensboro, and it was 40 years ago was the last time the ACC sponsored a gymnastics championship won by NC State. And when we return, we'll look back at that historic achievement. Nineteen eighty four was the first time and before this season the only time that the ACC sponsored a gymnastics championship meet NC State won that inaugural title dominating on the uneven bars and balance beam to post a season high one ninety seven two five that day to beat North Carolina Maryland and Duke. Hi everybody, I'm Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson Clark and how exciting this year. Not only has it been a historic season for all of these teams in the ACC, but what about the athletes who were competing 40 years ago? What were they thinking? I can't even imagine. You and I know 1984. That was yeah. our Olympic year, so we know how long ago it was, but how special it is. They were the heroes of the day back then. They planted the seed for all the NC State gymnasts, and now the ACC, what is blossoming, we now are seeing the heroes of, t of now and the future. NC State gymnastics team hosted a celebration and reunion for the 1984 ACC championship team before their meets on March 9th and 10th. Attendees included coach Mark Stevenson, Angela Regan, Colleen Bosnick Martinson, Annette Evans Harvey, and Karen Nagel Miller. Let's go down to Taylor Tannenbaum with more. Guys, if we're gonna talk history, how about the NC State men's basketball team? Because this time last Saturday night, they won the program's first ACC championship in 37 long years. And these Wolfpack gymnasts were locked in down there in Gainesville ahead of their meet against Florida. They were all together at the hotel cheering and screaming, watching their team in the semifinals against Virginia. They loved that Michael O'Connor, Michael O'Connell buzzer beater three to send them to the championship game. And the men have been using this motto, why not us, during their crazy run. So Coach Kim Landris joked with us this week and said, yeah, why not us to win this ACC championship? So we'll see if the ladies can bookend the week and bring some more hardware to Raleigh tonight. Speaking of the pack, they're heading to bars. One rotation down, three more to go. We'll be back with more competition from Greensboro after the break. The Greensboro Coliseum will be presenting that trophy at the end of this evening. The first ACC championship trophy in 40 years in gymnastics after the first of four rotations. How about this? North Carolina and Clemson are tied. Julia Noer on floor got that 9-9 in their anchor competition and has allowed them to tie with Clemson after a clutch routine for Rebecca Wells on the bars helped them recover from one of their earlier mistakes. So we have a great competition. NC State the favorite, but guess what? 
Right now, they're in third. Absolutely, and, and it shows how important those stuck landings are. Of all the events, vault is the hardest event to get those stuck landings, especially first event up when adrenaline is high, because it's already a high adrenaline event, trying to find that landing. All four teams separated by just two tenths of a point. Haley, Adelman's. And now it's North Carolina's turn to try to find those landings. That was Gwen Fink, pardon me. So the Yurchenko Fools are round off onto the board, back handspring onto the table, and just perfectly right down the middle. Very nice control, beautifully executed. Kaylee Adamides now on bars for NC State. Nice long lines. She is very tall and really has to take her time. Nice, stalled her. Sets up the dismount right into the tuck there back. Little shot forward. Lily Lippett on beam in that all important lead off roll. Comes in currently tied for first with Carolina after one of four rotations. We often talk about this leadoff performance on beam. It is so critical you want someone that is so trustworthy, so calm and confident in any situation because it just sets the stage for the rest of the performances. You want the confidence to build. And if she can go out and attack as aggressively and confidently as she is, it builds the confidence in the team. And the leadoff spot for Pitt on floor is Sierra Ward. This pass is her combination pass. A nice high floaty full into a lap and a stuck landing on the beam dismount for Lily Lippett. Nice start for Clemson. Sierra Ward, fifth year senior from Prince Frederick, Maryland. She's all heart, according to her coaches. And she has to get this third jump all the way around. That's a one and a half wolf jump. So the position is the wolf position in the air. Front leg straight, bottom leg bent. And she rotated one and a half times around. So Rudy, a one and a half twist. She is really happy with this routine. Did a nice job with both the tumbling and that leap sequence, a very difficult one that is crucial to her score. And what a way to pump up the energy on this team for Pitt coming off to a great first rotation on the beam. Corey Shinohara now after Gwen Fink led off North Carolina with a 9-8. Another year, Chanko full. Big hop on the landing this time. She had nice distance. Just a little bit more pike down than she needed, and that's probably what caused the over-rotation. Shinohara, the senior, vaulted all year long for the squad. Greek Clark will be on beam for Clemson and on the bars. Peyton Childs after Kaylee Adomides led them off with a solid 9-8. Oh, she's a, a little bit of trouble with the high bar release skill. She wasn't quite as high as she needed to be and didn't have the swing to really get into that transition. So she hit her legs on the ground. That's a significant deduction, not a fall, but a big deduction. B. Clark, one of the six transfers from Utah State. Standing front tuck into a straddle jump, a difficult combination. I think she'll get the connection she fought to keep it moving, but then had the balance break at the end. Oh, oh. and a fall. This is nerves. So she did not follow through and finish that aggressively and then press into the beam. 
biggest opportunity here for Clemson. She's been nine times in the beam lineup, and 9-9-2-5 is her season high. I mentioned one of the athletes who came from Utah State, that's where Amy Smith was formerly coaching. And when she came, about six athletes followed her to Clemson. Nice job with the remainder of the routine, but unfortunately that fall, five tenths of a point off. So watch this from the end. You have to line it up straight. And it was just, it's, you have to attack and land on a beam as if you're stilling the earth. I know you love when I say that, Bart. <laughs> but you really have to press into the beam. Stilling just, the earth, good luck with that. Yes. <laughs> Paige Ray John, the sophomore from Houston, Texas. And they do a full twist in Yurchenko. 995 start value. 975 was the score for Shinohara before her. Oh, I like the straight body lift off the table. That was really cleanly executed. Well done. Sierra Ward got a 9.85 in the leadoff spot for Pitt. That brings up Kaylee Larson. Nice height on that tuck double back. soft in the knees and slightly over rotated. It has a lot of reasons to be enthusiastic about the future. They're building a new $250 million complex for their team. They have an outstanding coach in Casey Jo McPherson, who is new to the program. She had coached for several years at Missouri and did a superb job with them and now has moved on to Pitt. And there are lots of reasons to be excited about the potential of this program with her leadership and the huge investment in the university giving gymnastics a priority. And so far, they're having a great conference championship Really loved how powerful and dynamic that routine was. She really matched the music. Casey Joe said the grit of her team this year has really impressed her. A lot to build on. <laughs> Madeline Reed now, the sophomore from South Carolina for NC State on bars. 9-7-7-5 was the score for Peyton Childs before her. She opened with a Maloney pack combination. Those transition skills going from low to high and back down to low bar. Sets up the dismount, a full twist in. Double back, a little hop on the landing, but a strong routine. Just a couple little form deductions at the beginning of the routine. I really like how all these teams have peaked for this championship. I'm really seeing their best gymnastics. Becca Wells, we saw her with a clutch routine on bars 9875 to replace that missed routine score. And now they need another great one on B because they have a 9225 for Bree Clark before and will likely be the score dropped. She needs the same kind of determination, determination and commitment on this event. You really have to like be. The brain has to be a steel trap. You cannot let any thoughts other than finish the skill. There's her acro series right here. Got hands from the layout, step up, and she saves it. 
there will be slight deductions for those arm adjustments for balance. See if you can get the stick on the double ah! twist. Really well done. A more difficult dismount. We see a lot of one and a half twists. That was a double twist. So that was a tough routine. She really hung in there. Has a couple little balance breaks, but great job. Friday here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app at 6 Eastern. It's college softball matchup you won't want to miss as number 12 Virginia Tech faces number four Duke. I think I'm really enjoying the scoring tower on the right because if you get a moment in the meet to look over and you can kind of update on your favorite team and the scores that your team is getting. And if you want to look at the bottom screen, you can see the running team total. Great information on the screen and another innovation from ESPN and the ACC. Put your eyes on this oh. vault. Kind of an awkward landing on that one and a half twist. Julia Knower. I'm not sure if it hurt or it just didn't seem quite normal. I think she's normally much higher. It's almost like she did not know where she was. When we talk about that blind landing, that's the result. When you don't quite know where you are um, kinesthetically, like air awareness, the floor can surprise you. All of these athletes have competed a full season week in and week out with no breaks. And now, of course, the ACC championship title to be determined today. There's a two-week break to the NCAA first rounds of regionals. We'll go to beam now. Kylan McWright, sophomore from Florida. Rebecca Wells had a 9-7 after holding on to that tumbling sequence. I love this routine, the unique Choreography, beautiful flexibility and posture. Notice how strong her feet are. It's almost as if they have suction cups, really grabs the beam. Handspring layout step out. Look at the determination, the commitment to finish the scale and press down into the beam. Right, primarily a beam specialist. Transfer from Utah State as well. Kind of known as the team mom. And she is quite the performer on this event. Doing difficult dance skills like that top jump full turn. Very expressive with her dance and her facial expressions, which is really something on balance beam because you are so focused on keeping your eyes on the end of the beam. Emily Todd on floor now for Pitt after Kaylee Larson had a 9-7-7. Watch the dismount here on beam. Gainer fall off the side, it's off of one leg and she just holds on. You have to hold that a full second, that's kind of if. You don't hold it a full second, they can deduct as much as a half a tenth of a point. And that looked like an out of bounds yes. on floor exercise, so. Notice the woman sitting there with the red flag. When that goes up, she has stepped over the line. It's at tenth of a point for out of bounds. Every tenth is going to matter in this championship. All four teams separated by less than two tenths of a point coming into this four, third second rotation. Excuse me. Emily Todd is on floor and Lolly Dekanoitsi. They need this ball. Oh gosh, a last second step forward. I thought she'd have the stick. It was beautiful in the air. Lovely routine. Really enjoyed that choreography, the music. Bit of delay for the scores over there. 
So Katie Harper now for NC State on bars. Ooh, very high but close release. Yes, that's the first time we've seen that release skill in this meet. It's called a ginger, flying away with a half twist, but you're right, it was very close, almost caught it with her nose. Oh, beautiful handstand, really showing that position off, and a floaty double layup. You see how high her chest was when she landed. That is textbook, gorgeous. Great finish for Katie Harper on bars. Sierra Church on beam after Kylan McWright had a 9875. They have two 9875s. Remember, oh, oh no, not what they needed. Hmm. They already had one fall. Bree Clark had only a 9225. So now that means. Since you count the best five out of six, they will count one fall, which is usually the objective. You do not want to count any falls in the meet. You have the opportunity to drop one low score per event. Really unfortunate on that back handspring layout. I was going to remark on how high the layout was. I loved the lift, but once you go high, you have to come down and attack that landing bring it down with authority and press into the beam. Love her story. She's a walk-on hard worker, and she kept pestering the coaching staff, says, I want to be on this team. What do I need to do? She didn't quite get the hit here. Finished strong, though. I like that she came back and fought hard to not give anything else away. Just a freshman. She'll have other opportunities for sure. Kaya Forbes, the last falter for Carolina. Lolly Dekanoidze had a 9-7-7-5. So Carolina's scores have not been great on ball. They only have one score of a 9-8. That was Gwen Fink in their leadoff spot. They need a good one here. They, they've been trying to go for big Julie Noah through the one and a half, and now we're going to see it from Kaya right here. One and a half. Oh, no. Only did the four. OK. So went for the big full, the 995 start value. Would have been great to get a stuck landing, but beautiful amplitude on that ball. That score for Noah was a 965. So that is their extra low score in that event. So the other score is more in that 975 range, not what Carolina needed in that rotation. We've noticed all season that vault, some people are even saying it's like the new beam, um, partly with the landing deductions, but also trying to decide, go for the bigger difficulty and that extra half a ten start value or play it safer and go for the stick. Allie Copperwheat, 9725 for Emily Todd before her. I love this combination, front through to a pike double back. Gymnastics is just so clean and precise, so pleasing to watch. Quinn Cool on beam now in that anchor spot for Clemson. We do not yet have the score for Sierra Church. Triple series on beam, nice. excellent. That takes guts, especially after two falls. When you connect those three skills, you get bonus, which goes to adding up to that 10-0 start value. A little cautious on that leap on beam. Score just came in for Church, it's a 9-2, so they will have to count a 9-2-2-5 on that event. Now we're looking for the stick here, top double back. Pretty good control. Such an elegant performance. Really enjoyed that. That was a nice little front toss on beam. It's a front somersault off of one foot. And she went right into a beat jump. OK, nice. Tough comeback routine there. One and a half twist dismount. 
Another young freshman for Clemson. Let's just admire and appreciate the difficulty here. Three skills back to back to back down the entire length of the beam. Alexis Ortega after Katie Harper had a 9-9. Watch this skill, it's called a Hindorf. Wow. And it's so fun to see, rarely see that skill in collegiate gymnastics. Nice, tight, together legs on the bail. Transition down to the low bar. Let's see if she can get the stick on this absolutely gorgeous double oh. right up there it is. Wow. What a beauty. And NC State can surge into the lead at this point because they've been spectacular on bars. So she is part of this triple threat. We got a one-two punch here at the end for NC State on bars, and that was a great angle to see that Hindorf and an absolutely beautiful, stunning double layout. And before her, Katie Harper, a 9-9. So huge opportunity for NC State to surge into the lead. Jalea Bedminster coming after Hallie Copperweed got their high score in that event. 9875 so far. This will be a double back in top position. Oh, look at the height and control. Switch side to switch side half down to Shushanova. That drop to belly drop on the floor. It's a combination pass two. Different somersaults in one pass. It's a requirement. Back one and a half to a front layout. <laughs> Great shot of the team. The senior oh. from Loganville, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> she is among the leaders of this team, and you can see why. Not just with her performance. So wow. you have to do it all on floor for the big scores. High tumbling, controlled landings, tight form in the air, show off the shapes. <laughs> and it looks like they might get her for one more year, which she's a senior and she is very excited about <laughs> continuing her career. And I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Emily Shepard coming after Alexis Ortega had the second 9-9 in a row for NC State. This is a high-flying, spectacular routine when she hits it. Opens with the straddle Jaeger. She's so precise on these skills. Perfect shape on that pack salto. Nice handstand pirouette on the low ball. And she just patiently rides that handstand right to the vertical position. And a gorgeous full twist and double back. Oh, she scooted back on the landing. <laughs> Exciting routine though. NC State will be in the lead at the end of this rotation and they can extend it even a little bit more. So there's a nice look at that single bar release and look at the perfect vertical position. Nice and straight, finishes it with the toes pointed. Love the pack salto down to low bar. And a double back with a full twist, just slightly overcooked a little bit. So she had to hop backwards. Kim Landris, the head coach at NC State, happy with her team in that second rotation. And 
NC State will move to beam in the next rotation, so that is where they're going to have to hold on to the lead they have just developed. As we go back now to Jordan Ewing on floor, Pitt at a 9 9 for Jalea Bedminster. Pitt really having an outstanding day today. Wins with a back one and a half to front layout. Little adjustment there on the landing. Pitt will be in second place at the halfway point in this competition. Regardless of her score, they've done so well. Clemson had three misses in their first two rotations and had to count a fall on beam. Therefore, this is where we are in the team standings. Really nice musicality and choreography. She'll finish with a double back in tuck position. You get bonus for doing a double back at the end of the routine. And that one was really well done. Oh, yeah. A lot of enthusiasm for the Pitt Panthers. They only had one win this year in the conference. They were one in five. They had a win over North Carolina. And yet they are surging into second place. Really nice controlled landing on that ball. The judges sit right on the side so they can see that perfectly straight body in the layout. Let's go down to Taylor, who is with Coach Dana Durani. First of all, I'm not normally taller than my subject, so this is really exciting. Coach, two rotations down when we talked this week. You said you wanted to see your team put together a full meet. What do you think so far? Really proud of them. Our, our goals were attack, uh, no regrets, and they have done that the first two events. We were leading our, in a tie, I think, after floor, and they, they were aggressive on ball. I love, I love what I'm seeing from this team. Part of tonight is about looking around and seeing the fans in the seats. What do you think, Coach? First ACC championship in 40 years, and this is how they show up. This is phenomenal, a testament to the excitement about gymnastics. ACC gymnastics could not be more excited and honored to be a part of this. Appreciate your time, Coach. Go Heels. Great crowd on hand, tons of enthusiasm. And Rebecca Wells came to Clemson with Coach Amy Smith from Utah State. Taylor Tannenbaum spoke to her about her first season and how the school and community has embraced this new and growing sport. Clemson is, if they build it, the fans will come. The environment for gymnastics in year one has been incredible. What's it been like from you as a gymnast? The fans have been outstanding. It's been insane to compete in front of that many people. It's just incredible to have that many fans and the support system that the Clemson community has to offer. One of the reasons you came to Clemson, your coach, Coach Amy Smith, you follow her from Utah State. What can you say about Coach? I think Amy's a perfect fit for the head coach of Clemson. She's so motivating, she's so helpful, and she's like a mom to us, and it's really been helpful throughout this year. Now, as you guys head into postseason, what is the mindset? The ACC championship has been our main goal this whole season. Just digging deep, focusing on the landings, keeping each other accountable throughout practice, and making sure we're really giving it our all this week. Led by Rebecca Wells, this Clemson team has reached insane heights, pun intended, in year one. And when I asked her to describe this team using just one word, she said resilient. She said, we've been through injuries, we've been through illnesses. And she just loves this team's strong, quiet, chill mindset that they've had to had in order to build a strong culture and foundation here at Clemson and they're already well on their way and Bart speaking of building something I said build it and they will come well how about that facility over there at Clemson Clemson's newest sport gymnastics has a new 27.5 million dollar 21,000 square foot facility for operations and practice for the gymnastics team and Pitt 
as Trees Hall will be the new home for Pittsburgh Gymnastics. The training center is a 12,000 square foot facility that houses state-of-the-art equipment. And the investment that these schools are putting into women's gymnastics, well, first, from my opinion, it's the best money they'll ever spend. But this is great for the conference and for the sport. All right, we got a great meet here. NC State with an outstanding job on bars, takes the lead. Pitt is in second, that's a surprise. And Clemson counted a fall on beam, they're trailing. We're back in Greensboro. North Carolina State has the lead, but the story of the meet has been Pitt, Kathy. It is great to see them having such a great championship. They are not moving on to regionals, so this competition is huge for them to put on a show, go for a season high here at the championship. It's just so exciting to watch and to think for their future and the future of ACC gymnastics. This is awesome. Coach Casey Joe McPherson said, I want to have energy from the start. We're not going to count an error. And Pitt is on pace for a school record total score. NC State, after there's Casey Joe McPherson. NC State, as we mentioned, was superb on the bars. And they are the rightful leaders. Pitt is in second, 15 one hundredths of a point behind them. And then behind is North Carolina and Clemson trails after a unfortunate, unlucky performance on the beam in that rotation. So here we are set for the third of four rotations. And we have a story building here. NC State the favorite in the lead, but Pitt having a meet. Jamie Shearer for North Carolina leads them off on bar. And it's great to see North Carolina having a really good championship. They are not moving on to regionals. Whoa. So this is their big moment here at the championships. And to start off with a stick on the bars, what a feeling. What a way to kick this rotation off and to fight to not move those feet. Well done. Jamie Shears in the lineup every meet on the bars for the team. Kennedy Duke now for Pitt on vault, trailing just by 15 one hundredths of a point behind our leaders, NC State, who is on the beam in this rotation. And Pitt does all 995 start values except for one, so they want to focus in on form, technique, and landings. Gave up a little on that with a step backwards, but nice and clean in the air. Let's talk about the psychology of that. Do you go for the more difficult ball, or do you go for the ball that's maybe less difficult, but a better chance of sticking the landing? That's up to each team to make that decision. And some, some teams, the top teams, do the one and a halves easily. So of course, it is smart for them to go for the difficulty in the tenno. Lily Lippitt now for Clemson on floor, hoping to come back after their unfortunate second rotation on beam. This is such a fun routine. Pink Panther themed at the beginning and One and a half to front full, a more difficult combination pass. Twisted both of those elements. Very secure over there on balance beam from Meg Adler for NC State. Very crucial event for NC State now. Everyone will rotate through beam at some point. NC State needs a hit to hold on to the lead. They are the top ranked team on this event. In the ACC, they're ranked 14th in the nation. This is their best event nationally. Side area right to the end of the balance beam. Cat late to a switch side. Two 
Julia Nower on bars for North Carolina. Almost overbalanced that first handstand and then lost her form at the end of the release skill. Nice opening beam routine for NC State. Their theme all year long has been to have a championship mentality every single day in training and in competition. Full twisting double back for the dismount. Solid routine. Just a little trouble in the first half of the routine. Kennedy Duke had a 9-7-5. Araya Simmons, Simons. She went a little bit off center, but it's so, this was her best event before she tore her Achilles, so for her to come back this strong and get back in the lineup on vault in particular, nice to see. Thursday in Chapel Hill, it's North Carolina's Pro Day as quarterback Drake May highlights the Tar Heels, showcasing their skills for NFL scouts and front office personnel. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Molly Arnold led Clemson off on floor with a strong 9875. I mean, this is Molly Arnold now. Lily Lippett had the 9875. She'll open with a sky high full twisting double back. This is an upgrade for her, and this is an E skill in gymnastics. E is the highest ranked difficulty. They see Jennings on beam for NC State, Meg Adler. An all important leadoff of a 985. Good start for the Wolfpack on beam. Watch the acrobatic series on balance beam on your left. Two back handsprings to a layout step out. Beautiful straight legs, perfectly in line with the beam. Very secure. Tumbling pass here, a gorgeous two and a half twist to a punch front. That was just textbook technique. Strong routine, nice floor. <laughs> a lot of difficulty in that routine, nice to see. Clemson hoping to get back on track, and they got a huge fan base, not only at home, averaging over 8,000 per meet, but great crowd here tonight in one. Nice, another great beam routine for NC State. They're killing it. NC State, for the last 30 years, was in the EAGL Conference. This year, of course, joining the first year of the ACC in gymnastics. Top seed coming into this meet. Here's North Carolina's Winfink. Just lost her toe point just a little bit on that straddle, Jaeger. Raina Garvey on the left on the ball. Nice double layout dismount on bars, and here's the fault. Your chanko full twist. Not a whole lot of height, but clean execution. She's happy with it. Get on to Taylor for more on Pitt. Yeah, you mentioned Pitt's having a great night so far. Well, I stopped head coach Casey Joe McPherson. I said, how are you feeling? She said, excited. We're seeing here what we've been seeing in training. They're trusting their training. They're having so much fun. They've got props. They've got pom-poms. And Coach McPherson has a big smile on her face. She's proud. <laughs> She said the last few weeks they finally started building some consistency. We yeah. saw them with some falls earlier in the season. But she told us earlier in the week that she said, I think my team has a chance. Because if they could do what they do in practice, we can compete with the best in the conference. 
Lauren Rutherford, an important moment for her after Molly Arnold gets the high score of the meet so far, 9.95 on floor for Clemson. And it was that high level of difficulty. We're also gonna see it here with Lauren Rutherford. This is just state of the art technique. Back two and a half twist. Well, punch front, beautifully done. A little bit of a large lunge forward, but love the flight in the air. Katie Harper on the beam, coming after Macy Jennings at 9-9, NC State. to see it from that angle. You can really see how narrow that balance beam is and how the gymnast has to keep their center of gravity, their hips and shoulders right in line with a four inch wide balance beam. Well done, good for them. Showing such confidence. Big opportunity here for Lauren Rutherford. Struggled in the first rotation on bars. Whoa, nice height. Boy, she has come up big here in the last rotation. Tigers fighting back. Nice to see. <laughs> People have been loving the tens this year in college gymnastics, so they ask for them any time they get the opportunity. With a half twist. There's your 10-0 start value vault in their rotation. Raina Garvey had a 9-6-5 before her. So notice the entrance. She comes in forward, no round off onto the board, and then a front handspring onto the table into a front pike half. Isabel Schaefer, the junior from Charlotte. Beautiful lines in her hands. It's nice flat back. Oh, that was beautiful. So floaty, well above the bar. And her legs, her feet, her ankles and toes are glued together. Magnificent. Gwen Fink before her had a 985. What execution. Stunning work on the end of the Well done. That was beautiful. <laughs> Yes, I love that face. <laughs> okay, that's what we do here. <laughs> I think that's an emoji. <laughs> All right, let's go down to Taylor. She has more on NC State, who's on beam in this rotation. Yeah, you consider the triple threat as Alexis Ortega, Emily Shepard, Chloe Negretti. Well, well, I have to tell you guys, there was a previous triple threat. There's precedent, because if you didn't know, fun fact, Coach Kim Landris is a triplet. Her sisters, Karen and Katie, and they were three gymnasts together. You see them on the screen at Iowa State, and they were referred to as the triple threat for the Cyclones. So Coach says it's really cool, a full circle connection between her current triple threat and, of course, her sisters, the uh, original triple threat. The triple triplet <laughs> threat. <laughs> As Ortega takes to the beam, it's Rebecca Wells for Clemson on floor coming after Rutherford's 9925. And they are a threat on this event. Back to back to back. Watch this pass. It is so difficult. Back handspring to an Anodi. That's a half turn into the front walkover. So difficult. NC State already has a 9-9 on beam. Two great routines side by side, so split your eyeballs if you can, because you don't want to miss either one. These were the two top beam teams based on their average scores coming into this competition. Expected to battle it out, but it has been spoiling the party, although their scores on vault are not great. And so Clemson an opportunity here to get back in this. Great amplitude on the leaps and a stuck landing on the dismount. That was fabulous. She slayed it. Back one and a half twist to a double twist. Love the difficulty, love the smile at the end. Way to fight Clemson. <laughs> 
known for her aggressive style. She took after this one, didn't she? Oh, this is great difficulty. At the end of the routine, a back one and a half twist and then goes through to a double twist. Sierra Ward now, fifth competitor for Pitt. They have no scores above 9.75 in this rotation, so they will lose some ground here. This can be a big fault. Oh, yeah, really? Well done. A little adjustment on the landing, so not perfectly stuck. <laughs> I thought she was going to take off and fly. <laughs> Holly Dekanoidze after Isabel Schaefer had a 9.925 career high for her on bars for Carolina in that fourth spot. And Dana Durante told us these two gymnasts, uh, Isabel and Lolly, are the standard bearers on the uneven bars. Their execution is superb. This is fabulous. Oh, what a thrill. And now Emily Shepard on beam. She is so lovely. Just a pure example that hard work pays off. Or two of the triple threat after Ortega had a 9.85. So all scores for NC State so far on beam are 9.8 to 9.9. Terrific rotation. So that handspring way out, step out. Tops the landing, so secure. Ruth Jackson on floor now for Clemson. Beautiful timing pass. Side aerial on the balance beam. Talk about Clemson having a great rotation. They have three scores, the last three scores, 9-9 nine, nine or better for these outstanding routines. Watch this dismount here on balance beam. Very difficult side aerial into a one and a half twist and she holds on to the stick. No movement of the feet, just a little arm adjustment. Wow, strong finish here. She just lit up this arena. Incredible, after struggling on beam, Clemson comes pouring back on floor here in the third of four rotations. Expect another big score. Julia Bedminster. Or Pitt is their final Walter. 9-8 was the score for Sierra Ward before her. She has stuck this ball three meets in a row. Let's see if she can make it four. Your chinko fall. Oh, great. Sometimes when you try too hard to get that stick, you get just slightly ahead of yourself. So she took the step forward. Amy Rosniak now on bars. The anchor spot after Lolly Dekanoidza had a 9.95. She just needs to be solid here. Those two ball routines before her sets her up so she can just go, go big, go for. Oh no! Oh! Oh boy. Oh my! Yeah, she was. Oh! Let's make sure she's okay. Yeah, which is what the coach is asking if she is okay. It was a mess up with the grip. Notice right here how oh. her thumb slips off the bar on the full pirouette on top. Wow. Those leather hand guards are used to help hang them onto the bars. If you don't get them in the right spot, they will not help you as you swing through the bottom. Enormous pressure. She'll have time to recoup and finish her routine as 
Chloe Negret, the third part of the triple threat after Emily Shepard had a 9-9. And I just love how different they all are. So special, so unique in this triple threat trio. Chloe, the serious one. Oh. Amy Wozniak will finish her bar routine. Okay. Only had five hit routines, so a missed opportunity, but NC State, on the other hand. Oh, wow, what a great team routine. Negretti, part three of the triple threat. There's Kim Landris knowing <laughs> that most of these championships come down. Philip Ogletree as well, the assistant. Most of these championships come down to beam and they delivered as is Clemson on the floor. Bree Clark coming after Eve Jackson at a 9-8-7-5. And if anyone can get this arena rocking, so many Clemson fans here. Oh! Oh! Little too much juice. <laughs> so much power, she just overdid it, went out of bounds. Out of pounds is a tenth of a point deduction, and there will, of course, be a deduction for the large step. And this speed is close. So every tenth is going to count. Nice extension, great amplitude on those leaps. I just looked over and caught a glimpse of some little gymnasts watching from the stand. They're doing this, doing the dance moves with her. It's so fun to see. Incredible fan base that Clemson has built in just one year. That was gorgeous. Nice bounding somersaults. Well done. Uh -huh. Great routine, of course. The over rotation and the step out of bounds. Yep, they will have to deduct, but. What a joyful routine, just a fun routine to the watch. The whole rotation was outstanding. 9-8-7-5 was the low score coming into this performance. Look at that, each one higher than the next. That's exactly what you want to see on those combination passes. Amy Smith giving a few notes to her team as they get ready for vault, the fourth and final rotation. March is Women's History Month, and Pitt and USC, UNC are two of a small number of schools to have all female staff. When we return, we'll hear how those schools gymnasts relate to these women around them. Half for me, it's not just, hey, I want an all-female staff. I want to hire the absolute best. And if they happen to be females, great. Across the board and just say, well, who's the best individual for the job? Who's going to be the most creative? Who's going to work the hardest? Who's going to bring us what we need? And that's what I want our young people to know. I've never had an all-female staff before, and it's something that I didn't quite realize the impact to until we now have it. They each bring something really different to the team. They bring a lot of fun, a lot of energy. We're able to connect in outside the gym. It's really easy, and I just love it. They're all incredibly experienced and have experienced success at the highest level, so I think they bring that passion, and we love them. Those women are a large part of the growth of gymnastics in the ACC. For more on that growth, let's go down to Taylor Tannenbaum, who is with ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. Yeah, guys, the commissioner has had a very busy day. He was over in Charlotte watching North Carolina basketball beat Michigan State. Now he's in Greensboro. This is a day to celebrate. First time in 40 years we'll be crowning a gymnastics champion. What's the magnitude of this for the ACC? It's pretty remarkable, Taylor. I mean, this is about how grounded the ACC is. This is about broad-based programming, our 15th women's sport, the most of any conference in the FBS, and how talented are these young women. It's, it is absolutely inspiring to be here. The electricity in this arena in Greensboro. I've been a lot of championships, I mean this. I don't know that I've been to a better championship. This has been spectacular. It's been awesome. We appreciate your commitment to women's sports, Commissioner. Listen, I love women's sports. I, I'm, I have six older sisters that never had the same opportunity that my girls do. I have one of, one of my two is a collegiate student athlete. 
This is about progress in America. It started with Title IX back in 1972, and we are making progress, and we certainly feel like we're a leader in the ACC. This is the most recent example. So I really give our schools a lot of credit. Clemson added gymnastics this past fall so that we could have four teams which allowed us to have a championship. So I give credit to these four schools, NC State, North Carolina, Pitt, and Clemson, and these amazing young women. This is only the beginning. We appreciate you, Commissioner. Appreciate you, Taylor. Thanks so much. Guys, back to you. And he said this is one of the best championships oh, he's ever been to. How I about was, that? I was like, here, well, we're here. Set for the fourth and final rotation, NC State, after matching their season high on beam, they take the lead going into the final rotation. trophy that will be awarded at the end of this evening's competition right now NC State after matching a season high on beam has extended their lead to just under seven tenths of a point followed by UNC Clemson and Pitt what a thrill it was to hear from the commissioner about their investment in women's sports and I've said it before but it's the best money they can spend these are the best student athletes on campus they do so much in their communities they're great representatives of the schools as we go to one of the greats Rebecca Wells from Clemson opens it up with a yeah. checkerful and a stuck landing that is the way to start a rotation and Pitt after mediocre scores on vault not great landings is now on the bars in the fourth and final rotation. Pitt still having an outstanding day. Only 198 on vault for Pitt. Every other score in that 9-7 range that they counted. So opportunity here on the bars for this team that got off to a great start. Jessica Naranjo, that all-important leadoff spot on beam. Getting last-minute instruction from Sammy Durante, Dana Durante's daughter, but uh, also LSU great gymnast in her own right. Another daughter coaching team over at North Carolina, both of the great gymnasts themselves. Katya Edwards for NC State on floor. with a very high, high double back, really held on to that front foot in the lounge. <laughs> we heard Dana Durante talk about their goals for this competition. They wanted to be aggressive, have no regrets, really attack everything. Nice finish out of that second tumbling pass. That handspring, one and a half twist. Really nice start for North, North Carolina on beam. One of their additional goals was to stick three out of six landings on ball, bars, and beam. They just missed the stick there. There's a textbook landing. There's <laughs> Eve Jackson, second to ball for Clemson after Rebecca Wells got them off with a really solid 9-8 bomb. And sometimes she can flare out to this floor. Watch the arms go oh. up. She tried but didn't get the block off the table, unfortunately, so. This will definitely be the score they hope to drop. See, she rushed a little off the table, but she normally would flare those arms out to the side, which is really beautiful, but she just wasn't high enough or in position to do it. 
Clemson coming off an outstanding rotation on floor. Hoping to finish strong on ball. Kennedy Duke after Faith, Lero, at a 9 8. Little leg separation on those two transition releases from bar to bar. That's Lexi Funk standing to the side. She's the assistant coach there, great Michigan gymnast herself, coaching the bars for this pit, the pit team. So great to see so many former champions getting back involved in the coaching ranks. And there's a lot of really young, brilliant coaches out there doing a great job with all these teams. 85 teams in women's NCAA competition. Just four in the ACC so far. But next year, they'll be welcoming Cal and Stanford into this conference. It's going to get even better. SMU, of course, will be in the ACC, but they do not field a gymnastics team yet. Holly Thompson on beam saw her rein in those nerves at the end of her acro series. Had a little balance correction, but really tightened up after. And she stayed firmly in charge on floor. Katya Edwards lead off 9-9. This is Maddie Hall on the way. shy of that double turn fell out of it just a little bit opens with a tucked up back almost bounced that landing but somehow managed to keep her toes attached to the floor I think just a little awkward five times in the floor lineup nine eight seven five last week was her season high so peaking at the right time Molly Arnold now this should be a Yurchenko one and a half twist. Important ball. Jackson fell. She stuck it at UCLA. Oh. A beautiful ball. Didn't get the stick this time. But nice to see them go for that difficulty. Get a 10-0 start value. What a finish for her. She had a 9-9-5 on floor in the last rotation and an excellent ball there. Good routine. I'm glad she fought for that landing on the first tumbling pass because, as I said, she didn't quite absorb it enough, but somehow kept her toes on the mat. <laughs> Let's go down to Taylor for more on UNC's beam. You mentioned the mother-daughter duo of Dana and Sammy Durrani. Well, Coach says it's been really cool to watch Sammy take the reins, coaching beam, running with it. They started out doing it together. Then Dana backed off and let her fly solo, and she's done a great job. She is so proud of her. And Coach did tell us she does keep it real, too, not just a mom. They do have those coach-to-coach -coach conversations. But the experience has been a very special one so far, guys. Taylor, it's funny because it, I could see her taking the reins, but for Dana to give them over to her, that's something, because they are both really good beam coaches. Dana had been in charge of beam for 20 years in her coaching career. Passing it on to her daughter now. And Andy trusting Rueda her. on beam. Oh. Yeah, Simon's on. Bars. So close to getting that stick, just a little step forward. Nice straight, straight legs on those leaps. Roeda doing a nice yeah. front tuck on beam. Had to step forward to keep her balance. A difficult skill. So far, this is the third hip routine. Let's see if she can get the stick. Oh, just a kind of a pogo stick landing. <laughs> Couldn't quite hold on with the feet. Ashley Knight, Maddie Hall before her a 9-8-2-5. Mm -hmm. 
Now this pass is also an e-skill. It's a front tumbling run. It's a front with a double twist. Ashley Knight has one of the top scores today on the ball. She had a 9-9 earlier. Slight under rotation, so she had to step back. That's Lauren Rutherford for Clemson. Molly Arnold before her, a 9.85, one of their highest scores. That's Emily Gaskins, who's also coaching at NC State. The floor standing in the corner with the red pants. She was a great gymnast for Alabama. Beautiful floor worker, so she's doing an excellent job with these gymnasts and the choreography and the presentation of the routines. Talk about investing in women's sports. This is the first year there at four paid coaches on the coaching staff, so more opportunity for these women to advance their careers. Nice high floaty back layout step out of that routine. <laughs> and there's the wolf pack symbol. So it's so wonderful to see the power and the technique combined to do that front with two twists. She can clean up the form just a little bit. Gwen Fink on beam now for Carolina. Their high score was their leadoff competitor, Naran Ho had the 9 8 7 5. Jordan Ewing on bars now for Pitt at the same time. Araya Simmons, 9.825 before her. Beautiful handstands on the uneven bars here. Into a Pike Jaeger. I think her knees bent just a little bit. She might have been a little too close, but that's an E skill on the bars, so nice difficulty. Oh, triple series back handsprings to two layout step outs on beam. Great job, and Lexi Funk, another assistant coach. Great at Michigan, it's, as you said, it's just so wonderful to see the gymnast stay in the sport, coach, and. Handspring to a one and a half twist, slight over rotation. They're not gonna quite get the three sticks on the landings, but wow. Watch this triple series, loved it. Back handspring to two layouts, very difficult. Perfectly in line with the balance beam. Well done. Madison Minner, sophomore from Anderson, South Carolina. Rutherford before her, a 9-8. Remember, Eve Jackson stumbled a bit, so Clemson needs to replace the 9-3-5 for Jackson. They need two hit vaults for the last two. This Krista is Zoltevich. On floor. Also a one and a half twist in oh. tucked position. Unusual to see this ball in a tucked position. It's a 10-0 start value as well, and really well done. Look at the height. Ashley Knight before her, 9-9. Nine, nine. They have two 9-9s nine, and a 9825 as NC State intends to extend their lead the fourth and final rotation. Turns it a half into a wolf full. Zoltevich has been in every floor lineup. 9-9 nine, nine is her season high as Julia Noer all around her for NC North Carolina after Fink had a 9.85. Little under rotated, so her chest was down. They'll take a little deduction there. But an electric routine. She is so entertaining.
Nice elevation on that switch leap into a split jump. Todd on the bars now for Pitt. Nice Pike Jager, remember that's an E skill, very difficult, slight balance issue on being just drop that shoulder a little bit. Sets up the dismount right out of the full pirouette into a high top double back, a step back. We're coming to the close on the fourth and final rotation. NC State, a commanding lead coming into this final rotation. And Clemson's meet will be over after this performance from Maggie Holman. Madison Minner before her at a 9.875. Pike half. Wow. Yeah. Nice technique. That's beautiful. Really beautiful position onto the table. Yes, she took a step on the landing, but I bet that vault looked really nice from the side, which is the angle that the judges get. Emily Shepard needs a 9.8 or better to clinch the all around and the team championship for NC State. They are contesting titles in each of the apparatus as well as the all around big moment for this young lady. Zoltevich had a 9775. Shepard, one of the triple threat athletes, and you're going to see why. And what's beautiful about this routine is the virtuosity, the, how big she tumbles and expresses herself in the choreography. And the school record in the all around for her expertise. Opens with a high double back. Oh. Elevation and extension. And a deceptive amount of power. She comes off that floor so quickly. Mr. Combination pass, front lane to front full. Many of the gymnasts in NCAA gymnastics are now doing two pass routines. Emily does three, showing that endurance. If you can get enough difficulty in the two passes, you still have a 10-0 start value, but a lot of purists out there love to see these gymnasts do the three passes, take the risk of another landing right here. High tuck to oh, the back. Yeah. Well done. All right. What a performance. Four events, four spectacular performances. And while the crowd is going crazy, it's Jamie Shearer on the beam for North Carolina. And this just shows you the concentration that it takes to be a great gymnast. You have to block out all this noise, concentrate on your cues, stay cool and calm, aggressive. One arm front walk over. Jalea Bedminster on bars for Pitt. She's repeating because she needed to connect that into the dismount and could not quite get the connection. So she's probably going to have a start value issue with that score. Gonna try to spot the landing on this after the double layout. Just one little foot adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> this team has been so fun to watch. Say, a highlight for me is watching Pitt here at the championship. 
And from the end, you can see she keeps those legs together. <laughs> <laughs> the smile says it all. Oh, that's fun. Big future for this program. New facilities coming online. Great coaching staff. The future is bright for the Pitt Panthers. What a way to finish their season. It's and just awesome. Emily Shepard gets what they needed. A 9-9-5. NC State will win it. And she will win the all around. And that brings up Chloe Negretti to wrap it up for the Wolfpack. Somewhat of an encore performance here. And I love the way she presents this routine. Very serious, dramatic. Trophy is theirs. And she shushes everyone to pay attention right here. Oh, there it is. And with the trademark <laughs> red lipstick. <laughs> Love it. NC State <laughs> will win the 2024 ACC Championship. Of course, their fans want to see a 10. Chloe Negretti, every meet in the floor lineup. We'll wrap it up for this team after Shepard's 9-9-5. At this point, it's all academic. NC State comfortably in the lead. And there is the commissioner and the first ACC trophy to be presented in gymnastics in 40 years. <laughs> what a special moment. The history they're making right now. And in a conference that values women in sport and the commitment they've made to create and build something so special. Not just for these women, but all the little girls out here that I'm watching their faces. They're dreaming of being here someday, competing in college. And these are their heroes. Kim Landris coached their team in the EAGL for many years. Fell short last year of the championship, but this year now in the ACC, they are the winners. What a fun day here in Greensboro. We'll be back to wrap it up in a few minutes, but great gymnastics from all four teams in the ACC and a thrilling championship. The trophy presentation from the ACC commissioner, the first time in 40 years they have sponsored a gymnastics championship, and NC State poured it on in the end. Chloe Negretti, a 9.975, the final competitor, helps secure the win. Let's go down to Taylor Tannenbaum. Guys, it's a cluster down here because NC State is busy celebrating. I had to break Emily Shepard away. This is emotional. How would you describe what you guys just did and how you're feeling? It is just so rewarding. We have worked for this all year long. I've been working for this for five years. This is the reason I came back for my fifth year and so it just feels really good. What was the mindset of this team heading into tonight's meet? We just said stay gritty. We don't care if we're number one. We don't care if we're last. We're going to be the grittiest team. It's not the best team, it's the grittiest. 
prettiest team that wins. We've been talking about the triple threat all night. So I see Chloe in the background. I see Lex Ortega in the background. If you could grab your two teammates behind you right now. We want to get them in here. Lex, come in here too. The three of you have been together for five years. How would you describe this? This is a dream come true. I think we've all wanted this for so long. And with this team, at this moment to see it happen, I can't even describe how great it feels. With these girls, we've been through so much together and this is everything. This isn't the end of the road. This team's going to the postseason, Chloe. What does tonight do for a push heading into that postseason? It gives us so much confidence. And I mean, this was just another step in our stepping stones and our staircase. And we've really made it worth it. You see the tears are flowing, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to the Wolf Pack. Emily Shepard is the all around champion. What a performance, Kathy. Just soak this in. Beautiful gymnastics. Gutsy, gritty, determined. As she said, she came back for her fifth year to experience this with her teammates for her school, for herself. They're what also crowning champions in each individual event, including the all around. A lot of happy young women here who have just been superb in this championship. Ashley Knight with that 9-9 on vault from NC State gets the title there. Lali Dekanoidzi. 995 her season high wins the bars. Chloe Negretti with a 995 wins the beam with a season high as well as the floor with a 9975. What a finish for Negretti and all of NC State. Looks like Taylor's got the champion coach right there with Kim Landers. Taylor? I finally found her in the mosh pit over here. Coach, when you turn around and you look at your ladies enjoying this, how does that make you feel? I just uh, like they were gritty. We talked about just staying together, and this year has just been something special. This is a special team, and I'm just so proud of them. I love them so much, and I just I'm ready to celebrate tonight. Emily Shepard, Lex Ortega, Chloe Negretti—they were key tonight and for the last five years. What can you say about your triple threat? Oh gosh, my triple threat—they're just so special. They've really meant so much just for our program and for me personally. We have. What does tonight mean long term for NC State Gymnastics? You know, we just gotta keep being gritty. We did this tonight by being gritty. So when you have a passion and you love something, you drive and you go after it. Congratulations, Coach. Go celebrate. Thank you, thank you. Guys. Oh, what fun. Taylor, you got to talk to all the stars and what enthusiasm for the champions tonight. What an initial year for ACC Gymnastics. Great competition, great programs, and a great future. Right for sure. We'll come back to wrap this one up in a moment. tonight was we're not done yet folks we have the regionals and the national championship coming up later on in april and you're not going to want to miss the finest teams we're going to cover the regionals april 4 through 7 on espn plus then the ncaa semifinals on april 18th on espn 2 and then the finals preview and the final championship show at 4 p.m eastern on april 20th from Fort Worth, Texas. Everybody, Bar Connor, along with Kathy Johnson Clark, and many of you know that Kathy has announced that she would like to retire this year. <laughs> and Kathy, uh, I just want you to know 40 years we've traveled the world together, we've covered gymnastics. Your contribution to the sport as an athlete, as an advocate, and as an announcer have just been profound. And I want you to know how much we love you and appreciate you. And thank you for all you've given to gymnastics. I have said what I've said, but I think there are others who would like to say something as well.
Kathy Johnson Clark competed beneath the Olympic flame, winning two medals for the United States, and has since shined a light on the sport she loves. That impressive history of dominance makes it so exciting to have front row seats. Kathy's expertise enhanced our experience of gymnastics. Double front with a half twist, glorious stock landing. Kathy, you've given so much to gymnastics, and we are truly grateful. From one KJ to another KJ, thank you so much for your passion and dedication to NCAA gymnastics. You've made a difference. We're going to miss you. Hi, Kathy. Congratulations on your retirement and congrats on a fantastic career. Your passion and love for our sport that you've shared has elevated NCAA gymnastics on the bigger stage. Our growth has been tremendous and you have been a very instrumental part of that. Congratulations on an iconic career, both as an athlete and as a broadcaster. You called my first. 10.0 and about half of my 10s as well. And you just bring such a light to commentary. Your respect, your passion, your commitment to excellence, and most of all, the love that you have for everything you do will be deeply missed, my friend. I just admire you so much. You have been a wonderful advocate for women's sports, women's gymnastics, class act, and I have felt privileged to work alongside of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. I appreciate everything you've done for me as a mentor, a friend, and of course, my broadcast mom. Thank you for everything you've done for the gymnastics community. The sport will not be the same without you, but it is certainly better because of you. Thank you for all you've done. Your legacy is tremendous. Kathy, from all of us, thank you. <laughs> the evening will be ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips. First, we'd like to recognize the top six finishers in each of our individual disciplines. Please come forward when your name is called. We begin with the vault competition. In sixth place with a score of 9.825, Clemson's Maggie Holman. Time for third place with a score of 9.850 from Clemson, Molly Arnold, <laughs> Rebecca Wells, and NC State's Chloe Negretti. The ACC runner-up on vault with a score of 9.875, Clemson's Madison Minner. With a score of 9.9, .9, the 2024 ACC vault champion, NC State's Ashley Knight. Now for our top finishers on bars. Time for fourth place with a score of 9.9. .9. Pitts, Jalea Bedminster. Yeah. NC State's Alexis Ortega. Yeah. And Katie Harper. Yeah. Also time for fourth place, Clemson's Lily Lippett. Time for second place with a score of 9.925. From Carolina, Isabel Schaefer. From NC State, Emily Shepard. The ACC Uneven Bars champion with a score of 9.950, Carolina's Lolly Dekanoidza. Introducing our top balance beam finishers. Time for fifth place with a score of 9.875. Carolina's Jessica Naranjo.
Thompson's Kaylin McWright. And Lily Lippett. Time for second place with a score of 9.9. .9. NC State's Emily Shepard. And Macy Jennings. Along with Pitts, Helly Copperwheat. The champion with a score of 9.95. NC State's Chloe Negretti. We now move to the floor exercise. Time for sixth place with a score of 9.9. .9. From NC State, Ashley Knight. And Katia Edwards. From Clemson, Rebecca Wells. From Pitt, Julia Bedminster. And from Carolina, Julia Noer. In fifth place, from Clemson, with a score of 9.925, Lauren Rutherford. Time for runner-up with a score of 9.950. NC State's Emily Shepard. Clemson's Molly Arnold. And Pitt's Jordan Ewing. The ACC floor champion with a score of 9.975, NC State's Chloe Negretti. We now recognize our top performers in the all-around competition. In sixth place, with a score of 9.825, Clemson's Maggie Holman. Correction, our all-around top two award finishers, the conference runner-up, with a score of 39.325, Clemson's Rebecca Wells. The all-around champion with a score of 39.5, NC State's Emily Shepard. We now recognize our individual season award winners. Coach of the Year, Clemson's Amy Smith.
Newcomer of the Year, Clemson's Lily Lippett. Specialist of the Year, NC State's Chloe Negretti. Gymnast of the Year, NC State's Emily Shepard. We'd now like to recognize our team award winners. Time for third place with a score of 196.3. The Pitt Panthers and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Our second place finisher is the ACC runners-up with a score of 196.425, the Clemson Tigers. The 2024 ACC Women's Gymnastics Champions with a total event score of 197.550, the NC State Wolfpack. ACC Gymnastics Championship Trophy. Let's give a large round of applause for all of our championship participants. We'd now like to recognize the individual members of the 2024 ACC Champion NC State Wolfpack. Please come forward when your name is called. Once again, we'll recognize the individual members of our championship team, NC State. Please come forward as your name is called. Meg Adler.
Kelly Edelmitis. Madison Benson. Peyton Childs. Katia Edwards. Wells Fisher. Maddie Hall. Katie Harper. Macy Jennings. Ashley Knight. Lucy Lehman. Chloe Negretti. Sophia Obergon. Alexis Ortega. Madeline Reed. Emily Shepard. Lauren Wright. Krista Zoltevich. Assistant coach, Bob Starkle. <laughs> Assistant coach, Phil Ogletree. <laughs> Assistant coach, Emily Gaskins. NC State head coach, Kim Landris. The ACC Championship Trophy is presented to the NC State Wolfpack. Congratulations to Coach Landris and her team. One more large round of applause for the 2024 ACC champions, the NC State Wolfpack.